Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader, I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between December 2nd and December 9th, 2017. So, we begin this week with a terminal in the heavens. On the 1st of December, we had an exact opposition between Mars and Uranus. As I said in the last video, this is a more volatile time, a time that we could blow up uh, rapidly. We could have a shorter fuse, that we could feel that our initiative, our needs, our craving is not being met by the group or by society, that we need to walk forward, but there's something that isn't walking uh, in our pace, in our same pace, and uh, keeping us back on the one hand, or that we are asked to uh, make some decisive action and actually move forward, and we are being challenged by it from the group, from society, from our social circles. This is a time that we need to make sure that we are as sensitive and as tolerant as possible. And we have an aspect in the sky that helps us do so, that makes us a little tamer and <clears throat> more sensitive and softer. On the second, we have the exact trine between Jupiter and Neptune. It's a very spiritual, very creative, artistic influence that can expand our horizons in everything concerning philosophy, spirituality, and realms that are concerned with the right mind and not the left brain and this is a great time for us also to take it a little easier as a colleague a beautiful astrologer by the name of Paula Sheldon uh, charting your course astrology check out her uh, Facebook page um, knows the influences of Neptune very well and after the last video she said I was too negative about Neptune and that Neptune is also a great opportunity to just lay back and enjoy and be a little passive and also uh, uh, go out to nature, out to the sea, out to the forest, whatever it is. So when we have Jupiter trining Neptune, this is a great time for traveling in nature and just laying back and enjoying yourself. And it's quite in contradiction with that volatile opposition we have in the sky. And it's two different energies playing parts in two different parts of our lives. And we need to balance them out. On the third, we have Mercury entering its retrograde for the next uh, three weeks, three and a half weeks, until the 24th. It's going to be retrograding in Sagittarius. Every Mercury retrograde is a time that we could have communication malfunctions that our input and output mechanisms do not work as well as we might, might expect them to. That we could have uh, uh, um, power failures or, or uh, malfunctions with any kind of electronic equipment. And the time that Mercury is slowing down like it has for the last week is already considered part of the retrograde. Because you could, as the planet slows down, things start to break off and break up. Mercury retrograde is not a time that we should stop breathing and stop doing things and stop working and stop navigating our life. It's just that we need to make sure that we're looking at all the small print, that we're checking out double all the uh, details that are concerned. It's not a great time to plan for changes, but if changes or anything needs to be done at that time, that could be good. As I always tell people, I actually signed the contract for this apartment I'm in right now in a Mercury retrograde, and we're loving it, okay? We've been here for a year already. Talking about power fails, my computer just died. I had to stop the video and, and make sure it's okay. So, definitely can feel it already. Mercury is retrograding in Sagittarius. It's a lot about ideology. It's about the truth that we believe to be true. It's about um, the philosophical subjects that we are attuned to. And many times this is a time that we begin to think differently, change our belief systems, change the things that we decide are true for us. There can be great developments in your spiritual realms at this time 
could be also a time that something changes in the approach you have towards in other countries and other cultures. It's a time of expansion, but often through a sense of bewilderment and not a sense of being too focused on where you need to go. But this is certainly a time that we find out through mistakes and through uh, different suggestions that turn out to be not as exact as we wanted them to be, what is the truth and what is the way for us. But often, as I said, it is through uh, a, a feeling of losing one's uh, ideology or losing one's faith in something or losing one's road that we can find ourselves anew. Ceres is in the beginning of this week, in the weekend, on the North Node. This is a great time to give for the sake of giving. This is a time to be productive. It's a beautiful time that you can enjoy the bountiful um, nature of this planet. Food, drink, flowers, grass, sunshine, whatever it is. Well, it is December, so I hope sun is, where, <laughs> is shining where you are. But uh, it's a great time to enjoy just this life, being in a physical plane. And the third is also a full moon. It's an energetic peak of this month. It's a full moon in Gemini. And again, it has to do a lot with our ideas, our information, our thoughts, and the way we spell out things, the way we output and input information and data into our systems. And it's a lot about how these ideas connect to how we choose to navigate our life forwards. Now, usually a full moon is about, um, it's a peak, you know, that we move on forward to. But here this peak, and again, it adds up to that sense of confusion and, and, and sense of having this vague, um, fog around us, you know, all this fog around us that we, we're not sure what's the right answer yet because this full moon is going to square Neptune. Neptune is squaring the sun on the one hand and squaring the moon on the other hand which are in opposition every full moon because the sun rays are exactly opposing the moon so it colors it fully unless earth stands in the middle and then we have a lunar eclipse so there's Neptune standing in there. So that means that a lot of the answers come from inside, come from the realms of feeling and not so much of the intellectual part of ourselves. We have a saying in the Jewish scriptures that goes something like that. Once you know, return it to your heart. And, you know, there's a question there. What do you mean once you know, return it to your heart? Because the belief is that something initiates in the realms of feeling, initiates in the heart, then transmutes itself to the higher cerebral plane. We think about it, we formulate it, we get to an answer, and then we return it to our heart, we return it to the animalistic feeling, so we could get the animus, we can get the movement forward to actually take this concept and make it play out in our reality. So Neptune squaring the nodes is some of that energy. It's about understanding that our decisions are not all logic. That there's some things that we cannot control, including our feelings and the way we feel about certain things, our environments, uh, things that happen on a larger scale. We cannot even anticipate them. And we need to conform on the one hand and we need to feel what's true and best for us as well. Our gut feelings. On the fourth, we have the moon in Gemini opposing Saturn square in Chiron. It's a sensitive day. Don't be too caught up in your thoughts and ideas. And don't be too judgmental. And remember that you're sensitive and everybody around you is probably more sensitive this day. On the fifth, Chiron goes direct. It was retrograding and now it's walking forward. And that usually, concerning the places we feel hurt in and, and the places that we can heal ourselves and heal others from, which are the same places within us, work better. 
It's as if we can look at our pains and aches and the things we need to remedy better and actually heal them better in our lives. On the same day, Mars is going to sextile Mercury as well. It, Mercury, even though it's in retrograde, with that martial effect, that means that other people in our life can be influential on that day to help us gain new ideas, to provide new action, moving, movement forward. Now, since Mercury is in retrograde, that confuses things a little bit. It seems that things are not clear-cut. There's not a, a, a very a pristine and clear way we should approach things. It's, it's, it's more of a, a bit of a mess and actually we can get things done on the 5th with the help of other people around us. We can make things move forward. And on the 6th, we have the Moon in Cancer, which is very emotional already and melodramatic. And then it's T-squaring Mars Uranus, that opposition we were talking about before. So it's a volatile day regarding emotions that are not contained. We have to be careful not to be too aggressive or too assertive that day and not to try to stand out of the crowd um, regardless. Okay? It's about, if we're talking about rebellion with Uranus Neptune, we have to talk about smart rebellion and and considerate rebellion and not just an all-out war against everything and anything and then throwing out the baby with the bathwater because we just got too angry or too sad with things. Um, on the 7th we have the Moon in Leo, square Jupiter, trying the Sun on the North Node. This is a day that we can very much enjoy ourselves, we can indulge ourselves, we have to be careful not to indulge, our, indulge ourselves too much and not to be too extravagant. But saying that, that's a great day to enjoy family, uh, to enjoy uh, the home environment, to enjoy more intimate surroundings, to enjoy um, being with good familiar friends. It's a day that intimacy and enjoyment of life could be heightened. On the 8th, the moon is still in Leo and it's trining Saturn and Mercury. And Uranus in Aries creating a grand trine. This is again a good day that we can, with a little joie de vivre, joy of life and optimism, move things forward in a way that could prove strategically beneficial for us. Create positive change. And on the 9th, we have Mars entering Scorpio. In ancient astrology, it's its ruling sign. In modern astrology, it's the co-ruler of Scorpio. It feels very well in Scorpio and it's very strong, almost too strong. That means that our actions could be too obsessive. That means that we could be too locked on our ideas and, and become even a little um, cruel to people in our actions to people who are either in partnership with us, whether it is a work partnership, a friendship, or a romantical partnership. We have to be careful not to go too, not to, to, to come on too strong. Also our desires, all our male parts, you know, all our male energy within both of us, male and female, is heightened. It becomes clearer to us that we need to dive deeper and become more powerful in order to take our life forward. It's a need to overcome our restrictions and our boundaries. It's a need to transmute and let something die in order for something new to begin. And when we're talking about Mars being there, it's a time that we can meet aggression. It's a time that we can meet drama. It's also a time that we can get, meet great challenges that seem to us like they're turning our world apart, but really they're, they're taking us a level up. They're changing us and they're allowing us to say goodbye to things that are no longer needed. On the less, um, you know, extreme situation, this is just a time that we could actually direct our actions in a deeper, more authentic way for us. And we can gain new partners at this time, again, if we, if, we are, um, if we are considerate and if we are sensitive and if we're not too assertive or aggressive. 
we're not too militaristic. It's a very militaristic uh, approach, and it could be also a bit paranoid and 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 too stressed about things. So, I'm, you know, I'm 50-50 about how, how this is going to feel. You can take it in there to this realm or to that realm. And what it really concerns is how how this Mars traveling in Scorpio sits in your natal chart. What it aspects in your natal chart and where Scorpio is in your natal chart. Check it out and that's how you'll know. Anyway, we're still looking for more people for our English group, both beginners and intermediate in evolutionary astrology. If you want to study with me, you can through the computer or your smartphone from wherever you are around the world. I want to thank you for listening and I want to remind you that every comment you have and every share and every like helps this video get exposed to more people. And of course, for private consultations and for any question you might have or a private lesson, I'd be very happy to hear from you. This is Boaz Feiler signing off. Have a beautiful week and a weekend. Bye-bye.